for vector u and vector v, find the projection of vector u onto vector v, and then find the projection of vector v onto vector u. So we have two parts here. And in part A, we want to find the projection of vector u onto vector v. So this is a direct application of the formula we were just looking at in the definition. So we know that this is equal to vector u dot vector v divided by the magnitude of vector v squared multiplied by vector v. So let's think about what we're given here. Rewriting these in component forms, we have vector u is defined as the vector 1, 2, 3. And we have vector v is defined by the components 3, 5, 7. So we need to find these pieces first. So we'll start with the dot product. Let's find vector u dot vector v. So this is 1 times 3, which gives us 3, plus 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 times 7 is 21. So we have 13 plus 21, which leaves us with 34. Now we also need the magnitude of vector v squared. So I'm going to keep in mind by the properties of vectors that the magnitude of vector v squared is equivalent to vector v dotted with itself. So I'm going to use the dot product here. So we can say that this is 3 squared to give us 9, plus 5 squared, which is 25, plus 7 squared, which is 49. So we have 34 plus 49, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of 83. All right, so let's put this all together. So we can say that, therefore, the projection of vector u onto vector v is defined as the dot product of u and v, so that's 34, divided by the magnitude of vector v squared, which is 83, multiplied by vector v. So we can put our components in, so this is going to be multiplied by the vector 3, 5, 7. And since 34 and 83 don't have anything in common, we can box this up. This is our beautiful final answer. If you want as well, you could distribute that 34 80 thirds through to each component, but this is perfect. So now let's go ahead and think about the reverse of this. So in part B, we are asked to find the projection of vector v on to vector u. So how is this going to change the formula? So we still have the dot product of u and v in the numerator, but this is now divided by the magnitude of vector u squared multiplied by vector u. And we're using the same vectors that were given vector u and vector v. And we'll give ourselves plenty of room here. So actually, before we scroll too far, let's also keep in mind that we need the dot product of u and v, which we found in part a. So we already know that vector u dot vector v is equal to 34. All right, so now we can give ourselves plenty of room. So again, I'm going to use the properties of vectors here. We know that the magnitude of vector u squared is equivalent to vector u dot vector u. So here we go. We have 1 squared is 1, plus 2 squared, which gives us 4, plus 3 squared, which gives us 9, for a beautiful final answer of 14. So putting this all together, we have the projection of vector v onto vector u is equal to the dot product of u and v divided by the magnitude of vector u squared multiplied by vector u. And here we can simplify. We know that 34 and 14 are both divisible by 2. So 34 divided by 2 gives us 17. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. So therefore, our beautiful final answer for the projection of vector v onto vector u is defined as 17 sevenths multiplied by the vector 1, 2, 3.